Now, when you hear the term urban survival, you probably think of some sort of end of the world, apocalyptic situation or scenarios, possibly something from like the war in Ukraine, The Last of Us, or World War Z comes to mind. But the reality is, is that urban areas have their own dangers that could result in a myriad of survival or emergency situations all of their own without any assistance of an outbreak of a genetic mutating virus or military invasion. So today we're going to be covering the first part of our urban survival class for free. The whole course is designed to provide you with the knowledge and confidence to survive the most common life-threatening situations in urban environments through a controlled exercise. And the principles taught apply to all urban disasters, regardless of where you end up in the world. We focus on the five needs for survival, which consist of our health, protection, sustenance, communication, and mobility. Now, we talked about these more in depth in a previous video. If you need to refresh or go ahead and check that video out and dig a little bit deeper. Now, with those five principles of survival, we can also start to apply them to the urban landscape and start to see how we're going to need to adapt and change for this environment. Now, it's important to know what's going to mess up all of your plans ahead of time so you can try to prepare for that, which is why we need to understand the area first off. This gets us into pre-mission planning, or what we would call an area study. Step one is to know where it is that you're going. So, best practice is to pull up and review the maps, either on Google Earth or MapQuest. It doesn't really matter which one, just make sure that you're using something that's current. Things change very quickly in urban environments, and if you're not using an accurate representation of the area, you're probably getting bad information. Now, the first thing you should be looking for is basic emergency services. The locations of hospitals, police stations, fire departments, as well as public parks, universities, governmental buildings, all of those are going to be vital portions of information and key locations that you should memorize. Having intimate knowledge of where those locations are can make the difference between getting an injured person to help when they can need it the most. It also will allow you to know which areas need to be avoided should something go wrong. You should also take note of the most prominent natural and man-made features of the city. You're looking for identifiable buildings, bridges, waterways, major roads, changes in the topography. All of those are going to help you quickly orient yourself with your surroundings. You should also analyze how the streets are laid out. If the city is built on a singular feature, it will likely be uh, spiraling out kind of like a wheel. If it's a grid-based system, it's easy peasy. Just plug in the pixels and you're going to be good to go. Some cities don't get those options. They are directly dictated by the topography of the region. So the roads can be going all over the place and it's really hard to keep track of what is what. You have to be reading the in order to understand how it's being laid out. Now, understanding the road systems will help create what we call handrails or travel lanes for the city. They operate like bumper rails in bowling that help you travel quickly without the need to reference the whole map. So all you have to really remember is just a few key roads. Now, knowing how the city is set up is important, but you should also know about the available resources and the infrastructure that is inside of that city. Now, every city is built different, which is why it's a good idea to learn about the specific place that you're going to. Now, the first step is going to be researching a lot. You should be looking for things such as the, the communication infrastructure. Uh, will your devices work there or not? Uh, will you be able to charge all of your devices uh, without any additional adapters or anything? Is the water treatment and distribution system up to my standards or should I bring my own treatment solution? And how effective is the sewer system or do they have sewers or even indoor plumbing? These are just a few of the questions that you should be asking. Now, the next natural question is going to be, where could we possibly find all this information? Now, if I'm traveling overseas, I like to use the CIA World Factbook. It provides a brief overview of all the permanent information uh, for each country and major city in the world. A uh, link for that is going to be down below as well in the side of the description. Uh, within the United States, I like to use citydata.com uh, where you can search each state and find all the same information, but for any city inside of the U.S. Also, down there. 
Now, both sources also discuss known threats and issues for the city, such as fault lines, floodplains, geopolitical relationships, and demographics. This information can help you interpret the most likely emergency situations and come up with a plan. Now, a highly looked over portion of your personal protection is your information. And securing it can be pretty simple. In some big cities, criminals simply sit back and watch your social media and wait for certain tanks to pop out. They track it. And when they start seeing people planning to come into their city, they can start building target packages in order to exploit those individuals. Not only that, but there's also people that could be next door to you or inside of your neighborhoods that wait for you to post your travel plans before you leave. And then you left all your stuff for them to come and take. Merry Christmas. So the best rule of thumb in all of those to protect you, your property, and your information is to simply not post it. Now, that's pretty unrealistic. You want to share your thoughts and your memories with your friends and family and how well the trip went and everything else like that. So by all means, do so. But wait to do it until you've already had your trip and you're already back home safe and sound. The only people that should know about your trip and your travel plans should be a handpicked select few individuals in order to help keep track of your property and your belongings. And they should also have a list of emergency contact information in order to get a hold of you. Now, to help you, we've also developed a free worksheet in order to help you plan and prepare for the worst while you pray for the best. This is also the first assignment of our Urban Survival class. Day one of our Urban Survival class, you'll be evaluated on how you filled out the worksheet for the area that we're holding the class in. If you would like to join us for a class or see what else we offer, uh, you can go ahead and check us out at our website at agonicllc.com. Uh, the link will also be down below. For those of you that have already registered to take a class with us, uh, we'll see you soon and we'll get to work.